All right, everyone, here is the video for the top five tips to play better and build a stronger city in Frostpunk, at least for the main scenario. This is not scripted. This is going to be me just doing a playthrough, and I'll you know periodically stop and discuss these five tips, and I do believe that they're the best five things to do in order to increase your productivity and really give yourself a better experience. So without further ado, let's get started. Tip number one is about workshops and research and 24-hour shifts, and I'll cover all of the rest of that in just a couple of seconds here. But number one, as soon as you get into the game, the second you get into the game, you have enough resources to build one workshop. And where you put that is up to you, but you should build that immediately and get that going. Because research is one of the kind of harder things to progress through in the game. And that's why tip number one is going to be about workshops, the 24-hour shift law, which I'll show you right here in just a second. Um, and how to use those properly. So emergency shift is uh, a 24 hour in one facility shift and you can kind of rotate through. So that is the first law that you're going to sign into place if you are struggling, this will help you quite a bit. So tip number one, workshops, research, and the 24 hour shifts. And I'll progress through and skip some gameplay here and show you the end result of what you're gonna be building. Uh, but these are the first few steps to that. Once you have the workshop up, which will happen in just a matter of seconds, then you immediately want to research Beacon, and that will play into the, the fifth tip that I have in the video, but right now, we're just gonna leave it at that. The first thing that you research right away, as soon as your first workshop is up, is Beacon. This will help you tremendously. Um, there's a lot of flexibility outside of these particular tips and you know for the whole middle section of the game But there's a couple things like this right at the beginning that you kind of need to do if you want to beat it on the harder difficulties And it really will make things a lot easier. So again as soon as the workshops up that first workshop right here that we just built uh, Research beacon right away. You do have enough resources for it at the end of the first workday, after you've divided up your workers and you know gathered some wood and some steel, you're going to have enough to build two more workshops, and I would highly advise doing that. And then you're going to take and you're going to emergency shift that first workshop. Now this will raise your discontent, but what that's going to do is allow you to finish finish researching the beacon on day one uh, during the nighttime, and then you're going to rotate these guys through every single time, and you're going to constantly have a workshop that is researching. You can use the same five workers periodically, maybe one of them might die, but this will allow you to research phenomenally fast as long as you have the resources and it's very easy to gather resources early. Um, so once you have three different workshops, you're going to rotate the workers from one to the next to the next as soon as uh, the 24 hour shift is over. Uh, and that will allow you to research things a lot faster than you normally would be able to. And that will give you a tremendous advantage early on and then, of course, later in the game. So tip number one, workshops build three. Sign the emergency shift law, just again to recap. Uh, and then use that to rotate your workers through and constantly be researching. Beacon first and then after that, whatever you feel is necessary to get the right resources or to augment your play style. So tip number one, done. Tip number two has to do with city construction and basically how you distribute your heat. So essentially what you want to do is divide your city up into different districts that have to do with how often or how long per day they require heat. So if you look at your heat map right here, it's very convenient. You can see that I have all of my houses kind of clustered around this one uh, steam hub right here. Now you can go with generator range and it's really up to you. That drastically increases the amount of coal that you need. I like to go with steam hubs and then put them right in the center of different districts. So if I have all of my houses here, then this steam vent will need to be on 24 hours a day. However, if I were to cluster all of my other buildings that are only during the workday, or if I were to build a steam hub out, you know, near some of my resource production, then you could turn that on for only the workday. And as long as you have all of these different buildings that have their own heat cycle, their own, you know, time of needing heat all around the same time, then you can kind of save a lot of resources. So make sure that you keep all of your houses and all of your 24 hour buildings tightly clustered so that they can be hit by one steam hub or you know two spread out over the course of uh you know two different areas like this uh or like this right here and then all of your you know workday buildings cluster them as well hunter huts don't really need anything um but things that are you know only during the workday that have people that commute out to it and then you can have you know less resources consumed so structure your city by different districts it's very very tempting to put everything right close to the generator but that's actually not what you want to do only essential things need to be exactly next to the generator otherwise you're going to be heating them uh, in their separate districts so if that makes any sense that's tip no tip number two Tip number three has to do with stacking up progressive bonuses. And in this game, what you're going to realize is that a lot of the different trees end in a kind of resulting boost for one particular type of building. Um, one really good example that I can show you is this medical post right here. Now, as you can see, I have extra rations. 
Um, and the efficiency is 192%. I'm basically getting double the amount of efficiency and productivity from this workplace as I should. And that's from a lot of different things. I have 20% from transplants. I have 12% from a medical post upgrade that I researched. I have 60% from double rations for the sick. Um, and there are even more bonuses. If you open up the tree of laws and go to adaptation, you can see that I've gone into child shelters and then medical apprentices. This will boost the efficiency of uh, you know your medical facilities. Then I've gone into corpse disposal and organ transplants, which again, helps the sick recover faster. Uh, and then outside of that, I've also researched extra rations for the ill, um, which again boosts that. And you can do this for just about every type of building. Another really, really good bonus to get um, it's something that's unique to the discipline tree is the foreman bonus uh, New ability foreman increases the efficiency of a workplace by 40% for 24 hours And you can stack all of these things on top of each other uh, another really good example would be this infirmary Which is at 120% uh, if I were to use extra rations if I had enough food then again It would go even higher um, you can use all of these bonuses like foreman it costs food rations But on top of other things again, it boosts it uh, you can use all of these to make one building perform Pretty much the role that two identical buildings of the same type would perform so stacking these up especially on the harder difficulties is going to be very very important so it doesn't matter which ones you choose very much as long as you're doing it uh, on whatever facilities you can right if you want to choose medical apprentices that's fine if you want to choose engineer apprentices and research faster that's also fine um, it doesn't really matter as long as you're making sure that all the different bonuses are stacked on top of each other rather than getting one or two for all of the different types of workplaces. Because as soon as you stack all of them on top for one, then you basically cut down so much on your need for that one thing that you can reallocate the people and the resources to other areas. Uh, and it makes the game a lot easier because all these bonuses stack really well. Tip number four is basically that automatons are completely overpowered. Uh, there's a lot of things that you need to do in order to realize their full potential, but they will work 24-7, they will not get sick, they do not require you to heat the building, and the other bonuses that you can get and the other boosts that you can get from the various laws will also apply to automatons. It wouldn't seem like this, but if you put, like, putting a foreman in a building with workers, he could yell at them through the megaphone and get them to work harder. Well, it also works on the automated automaton workers. Um, so things like that will boost the efficiency by 40%. It'll stack on top of everything else, but you do need to realize that potential. So once you start getting automatons, it may not seem worth it to get them for 100 of each material, 100 wood, 100 steel, and a steam core, but it is, I assure you. Uh, once you've gotten them, you need to go over to the research tree, and you need to get automaton integration, automaton integration 2, and then eventually automaton integration 3. This will boost them up from a base of 60%, to 70%, 80%, and then 90%, and on top of that, you can get 40% from the foreman upgrade in the discipline tree, um, or you can get various other bonuses like uh, utilize the dead on top of the foreman bonus with an automaton working in a hothouse, and you can start to produce ridiculous amounts of food or other resources on a 24-7 schedule, um, and these will just absolutely floor the game and give you more resources than you could ever dream of. Now, I'm doing a really basic run through here. It may look like my city is very mismanaged right now, but that's because I'm accelerating time every chance that I get. Uh, I am playing on a harder difficulty, and I'm only doing this for demonstrational purposes. Basically, if you're taking the time to make all these decisions, you'll be much further ahead than I am right now. You'll have more automatons. They'll be in better spots. You'll have better heating, um, and all of these tips will come together to create kind of an unbeatable city. The last tip that I have is number five, and that's scouting and outpost teams. So number one, like we discussed early on in the game when it comes to research, you're going to be using whatever bonuses you can constantly and then you know researching into the exploration tree and getting uh, the beacon and then scouts right away. But what you want to do is get lighter scout sleds, more scouts, additional scouts, uh, outpost depot as well, and faster outpost teams. All of these are extremely, extremely helpful. Uh, the reason for that is, number one, if we go to the world map, you're going to need to increase your population, and the only way to do that um, is to find people out in the world. So you need to have three different scout teams going, at least two. You need at least two scout teams going uh, very early on in the game, finding other people. There are various different camps that have you know, additional citizens and workers and engineers, etc. There's certain camps that have only children if you have the child labor law. Uh, it's really up to you. But explore as many points as possible. And oftentimes, don't just go to one point and then go back to the city with the resources. Go to three or four uh, and keep progressing through the chain. 
Now, outside of that, we move on to the outpost depots, and it does require you to build one of these big elevators right here, and then construct an outpost team like I just did. But there is one particular landmark, and it's called Tesla City, and you need to uh, progress with the scout through a bunch of these landmarks before you can get to it. And you do need to get to uh, New Manchester before, or, or sorry, uh, Winter Home. I don't know why I called it New Manchester. Uh, Winter Home, you have to explore that before you can unlock Tesla City, but then you can. You can get this about day 16 or 17 um, sometimes if you're very, very quick. And what this will do is allow you to get one Steam Core every single day for as long as that outpost is up, uh, as soon as you have an outpost team there. If you combine that with the fact that you have the research in the exploration tree for faster outpost teams, which increases the move speed of outpost teams by 50%, you're going to be getting two steam cores per three days, which means you get two automatons or two otherwise extremely helpful buildings like an industrial hothouse um, or you know a coal mine if you don't have those already or upgrades to various other resource production. You're going to be getting, or an infirmary or something like that, you're going to be getting two of those per three days. And if you get this around day 20 or day 25 even, uh, you will be getting dozens of buildings before the storm hits uh, and upgrades. And it's just going to be amazing. Tons of automatons and you can create the ultimate city. So Tesla City, uh, first you need to unlock uh, Winter Home and explore there and start the whole Londoner tree. And then you send an outpost team over there and have three scout teams going all at once. It may seem like a lot to manage, but trust me, it's absolutely worth it. And that's the only way. This is, as far as I can tell, and as far as my play experience, this is the only way to beat the significantly harder difficulties is getting all of these you know key points very quickly uh, and then establishing you know the influx of resources particularly steam cores to you know get the surplus of resources that you need before the storm hits um, but that's about it for tip number five that's going to wrap it up for this guide those should be kind of the best things that you need to know in order to increase your efficiency and have a better playthrough. Before I end, I do want to say that tip number one, which is arguably one of the most important tips in the video, did come from, well, in, in most part, it came from Marco Style, the YouTuber. Uh, I was hanging out in the live stream and I was already researching, experimenting, and playing, but he is just a genius when it comes to video games. It took him one day to figure out the rotation of research uh, and figure out which laws were better. So there's a link down in the description below to his channel. You do need to check him out. I don't know if he's covering this game. I don't think he is, actually. Um, but he, whatever game he chooses to cover is phenomenal. So uh, And it's, it's great educational content. So make sure you check him out. Uh, after that, I guess just check out the links down below. Hopefully this was helpful to some people. This city, look, it's not impressive. I know it looks like I have no idea what I'm doing. But that's because I was accelerating through every single chance that I got. Um, and just selecting things as fast as possible in order to demonstrate this. There are tons more tips that you can find out there. There is a lot of other decisions that you can make. The game has great depth, great artistry, and it's a really fantastic experience, so I would highly advise checking it out. Um, though it might not be for everyone, it doesn't really have troops or action or combat or anything like that. It's more of just a strategic post-apocalyptic city sim. Anyways, I'll stop rambling there. Check out the links down below if you want to support. Let me know what other type of content you'd like to see from the channel. I am looking to expand that library on a daily basis, so I'd be interested in that feedback. There's the the, uh, the Facebook community. There's a Discord community. Uh, you can check out the Twitch channel. I do stream from time to time. And our website and our, our gaming forums, and that's kind of going to wrap it up, though. Thank you for watching, guys. Again, I didn't script this one. This was all just kind of off the cuff to produce this while I could uh, live in-game. And that's it. As always, thanks for watching it again, and have a nice night.